I'm not saying don't do anything hard and heavy after ovulation, but just be cognizant of how your body is responding to that. You've spoken and written extensively about the concept of training within your cycle, and I'm really hoping we could dive into this a little bit more now. Firstly, how much have this this philosophy and these coaching methods around the menstrual cycle been incorporated at the elite level? It'd be great if you could give us an insight into how much that's that's now a, a key factor. But then also for the for the general female population, are women aware of some of the physiological changes that are happening at different stages of their cycle? And and specifically, what impact is that having on their training, their nutrition, their recovery, their sleep, so that they can build a better picture of when they should push, when they should hold back? Yeah. Um, so from an elite level, there are many, many professional athletes that are tracking this. Cycle. And this is what we want people to understand, that we don't have enough data to make generalized recommendations from sports science, but we do have really good case reports. We have anecdotal um, work, we have case studies. And again, we have information outside of sports science that we can pull in and look at how the body responds to stress and how it adapts across the menstrual cycle. So the very first thing that we want people to do is track their menstrual cycle. And so they can understand how they respond and how they sleep across their own cycle. Because again, it comes down to estrogen surges around ovulation, but are you someone who feels super flat around ovulation or are you someone that like feels full of And so when you start to know these nuances, then you can really maximize your own training within specific guidelines. Because if we're looking at low hormone state, the follicular phase, this is where your immune system is really robust. You can access carbohydrate really well. You can push heavy, heavy loads and recover from it. And it has to do again with immunity and stress resilience and the ability to adapt to stress. Then after ovulation, we have this change in your immune system. We have a changeover in metabolic aspects where your body can't access carbohydrate very well because carbohydrates coming in and being shuttled to the endometrial lining. We're having more muscle tissue breakdown because the body's like, I need more building blocks because I'm trying to build tissue. I'm trying to build the uterine lining and make it really robust in case a baby is you know, implanted. <clears throat> And so we're looking from a training scope, your body's fighting between training adaptations and trying to create a really good, robust endometrial lining. So when we start looking at what are we doing from a a stress and immunity and adaptation point of view, kind of need to think about it. And how am I responding? I'm not saying don't do anything hard and heavy after ovulation, but just be cognizant of how your body is responding to that. And then you can really start to go, oh, well, you know what? On day 18, I always feel like I'm getting a cold and I feel pretty flat. And you won't know that it's always day 18 if you're not tracking. But then you're like, oh, yeah, day 18. I'm going to schedule a recovery day. I'm not going to stress out too much that I can't hit intensities that I want to because I know that my body is not really that capable of doing it on that day. 